Hello there, I am the Bible of soccer, not soccer, and in this video we're gonna talk about Cameroon in the context of the Confederation Cup Russia 2017 and about how beautiful this bar looks like. I remind you that I'm going here with no teleprompter, no guidelines, no edition, no master edition, recording everything from my cell phone and I speak a little bit slow so that way I can connect one sentence with the next one and also I remind that uh, English is not my first language and English is not my second language. Okay, so we're going to talk about Cameroon. Cameroon is going to be in this uh, Confederation Cup because they were the champions of the African Confederation. Okay, so we're going to start with the best player of this team, which uh, also in this, in this video we're going to understand or we're going to try to explain why this team won uh, this championship of the African uh, nation of Cup of Nations of Africa. Okay, so we have Ondoa. Ondoa is the goalkeeper for this team. I will say that this team, all the players are pretty much in the same level, but his goalkeeper, I think, is the best team, the best uh, player of this team. Okay, he really uh, doesn't have any, anything special, but he is a, a good goalkeeper and his style of playing, let's say like that, he always gonna follow the ball, he's always gonna move with the ball, he's not going to try to anticipate where uh, the other player is gonna shoot, he's not gonna try to do that, he always is gonna follow the ball all the time okay and he always keeps the eye in the ball in the sense that even uh, when he tried to block if he send the ball somewhere else he always gonna try and he's always gonna keep focus in the ball okay the other thing that helps this uh, goalkeeper is that the way that this entire team plays uh, make the other team to get to the finish scoring area in a very rush, in a rush, okay? With a lot of uh, little time to think, little time to do something because Cameroon make, they make their uh, rivals play like this, okay? They make them play in a rush. Okay, that's why if you play against Cameroon, you need to be aware of this and you need to try to go with your own ideas and not uh, fail in the trap because they're gonna put you in the trap, they're gonna make you play in the way they want you to play. And you can go to the box many times with Cameroon and not score just because of this situation because you're gonna be always in a rush. Okay, so we have here, I'm gonna put here, which I think is the second best player of this team, but in this team, everybody's pretty much in the same level. This is gonna be, this one is just a little bit uh, in, a, in a better level, I think. And the other one is Engadeu. Engadeu, he plays a central, but really he is a, de a defensive midfielder. Okay, but in reality, in this team, he plays as central. Okay, this team, they have uh, five players, they have too many players that they change their position. Okay, this is made for two big reasons. One reason is that their coach, he's trying to play with the best 11 he has. So, he's gonna change a lot of players from the original position and they're gonna put them there. But the second reason, and the reason why this work, okay, is because African players, when they are growing up, when, are, when they are developing as players, they uh, 
They are very happy players. They say like that. They play for fun. Okay? So they grew up as players playing in any position. Okay, not all African teams, the culture is like this, but Cameroon is one of those countries. Most countries in Africa, the players, they play for, for fun and they can play pretty much in any position. Okay, that's why they made little changes like this, pos positional changes, and it still work. Okay, so Engadeu is a very, I call, intelligent, intelligent player. He always keep calm and he transmit this calmness to the rest of the team. Even when he has somebody from the uh, other team very close to him, he always try to keep calm, okay? He never lose his uh, easy state. He's always very calm, okay? He is tall. 190 he's very tall so he has good uh, aerial game as well as Teikeu. Teikeu he's not so tall but he's very good he has very good jumping so he is going to uh, that's why they play together as central because they can cover the aerial part of the game and as well as Engadeu, Teikeo, he also is a defensive midfielder. Okay, the difference is that this, this uh, Engadeu is a little bit more defensive and Teikeo not so much. He has more attacking attributes, let's put it like that. Okay, then Oh, another thing about uh, Teikeu is that he made acrobatics throw him. Okay, this acrobatic uh, throw ins is like the, he do like a acrobatic movement, so he can throw in and send the ball very far. Okay, this is very important to be aware of this because you never know. Okay, they have a player that he can send, a th send the ball with his hands very far. Uh, for example, uh, in the Golden Cup, in the Gold Cup, in the CONCACAF uh, Federation, um, <clears throat> Confederation, uh, Jamaica, they made very a lot of damage by doing throw-ins very far. Okay, they, they made a lot of damage by doing this. In the case of Cameroon, they didn't do a lot of damage by doing, they, doing this during the African Cup, but they may be doing it now. Okay, so if you play against Cameroon, you need to be aware of this. And Collins Faye, he does the same. He does acrobatic throw-ins. So we have one player, in each band, okay, in each side, that they can do these throw-ins. They don't do it all the time. Actually, they do it just in particular times, but it's better to be aware of this. Okay, Fai is not the typical, okay, uh, defender that is gonna try to go all the way to this, all the, all the way to the end. Okay, he actually likes to give the ball away pretty quick and then position himself to get the ball back or if the attacking is going in the other side of the field, he likes to move forward without the ball. Okay, but he is not gonna carry the ball to the end. That's not his style of playing. He can do it, of course, but that's not really his style. And uh, <clears throat> that's pretty much how he plays. Then we have Oyongo. Okay, Oyongo, he can kick the ball from outside the area. Okay, kick the ball. I'm gonna mark that, like kick the ball from outside the area. Okay, from very far. 
okay? I'm gonna be writing this for a reason, okay? Teikeu, he has a problem, okay? I forgot to mention. He has a problem that he always tend to, when he has the ball, he always tend to send the ball in that direction, to make a pass to that direction, to this player, of this player if he moves there or here. Okay, and we wanna. This is important to mention because we're gonna be talking about this movement later on. Okay, this player he can place here also. Okay, or Yongo. He also can place here, or he can place here as well. Okay, and he always is gonna be doing this movement. Okay, with or without the ball. He likes to show up a lot in the box, but he always follows trajectory, trajectory, okay? He's always gonna follow this pattern. He's gonna move to the middle and go like this. Okay, so you have to be aware of this. And <clears throat> then we have these two players, Siani, Okay, Siani. Siani also is good by kicking the ball from outside the area. So I'm gonna write here, kick the ball from outside the area. He's good in free kicks, okay? And he also can play in this position as an attacker, but in this side, okay, in the left attacking side. This is very strange in football, okay? This is very strange in, in football soccer that somebody who plays in the middle, they usually plays, can play in the middle, they can play as a central or they can play as an attacking midfielder or as a creator as a, or as an organizer. But it's a strange that somebody who plays as a defensive midfielder also can play as an attacker from the left. Okay, this is very strange, but I'm gonna mention it because this is gonna be very important uh, when I finish and I explain how this team play, uh, do their movements, okay? Which is very important. Okay, then we have uh, this player for some reason, he has Belgium citizenship, okay? Uh, uh, I'm gonna remind that Belgium and they have been, they were uh, in very good position in last uh, World Cup and they were the head of the group, okay? That helps you because you can get easier teams to play against in the group in the beginning of the tournament. I don't know if this player uh, don't, don't play for Belgium because they have a very good team right now or because they decided to play for Cameroon because they like Cameroon better or because they already were playing with Cameroon. If somebody knows this, you can leave me on the comments. Uh, what is the reason? Because uh, uh, the Jome, he has Belgium citizenship, okay? And he also plays for Cameroon. Uh, he has kick from outside the box from very far, okay? And uh, he's very fast. And he also likes to show up in the box, okay? And he can easily score. He's very good at scoring, but coming to help. But he, this is the position he plays, okay? Then we have these three players. These three players. All of these three players, their main position is central attacker. Okay, central attacker, that's where they play usually. But as I mentioned, the coach, he's trying to play with his best 11. So he changed them, their original position, and they put them there. So we have uh, Bas Basogok. Basogok, he has very good defini the, uh, definition from here. He has very good scoring. Okay, he's very fast and he can usually create spaces. That's very, pretty much his style of playing. He creates spaces. 
he's not very good at uh, trust, taking the ball for long periods of time, no. But he's very good at creating spaces, giving the ball to one of their, his teammates and then positioning better and keep going, okay? So that's why he plays there. Then we have uh, Sowa. So why he's in charge of the penalty kicks? So why he uh, goes very well with his head? He has very good aerial game. He also is very good at kicking the ball from outside the box, from very far. And he is in charge of the free kicks. But we have several that can do that, depending of the location of the free kick. Okay, but in general speaking, he is the one. Uh, in charge of the uh, free kicks and he also simplifies the game he simplifies the game very much he does uh, what it appears to be hard he does it very easy okay he's a solve a uh, troubleshooter if we can to say it like that very solve oriented player okay he always do simple things that appears to be hard if you think about it Okay, and he also has dribbling. He's very complete. Okay, he can evade some players. He has a little bit of good movement. Okay, very complete. And here we have uh, Mo Can Joe. I really don't very bad in the pronunciation of this of these names. And he also has free kick and shoot from outside the box from very far. He's very good with the head. He has aerial game as well. Okay, and he's very fast. And then at the end, uh, we have Endip Tambe. Okay, from this, all this team, all these players, there are only two players that cannot be changed position. Okay, one of them obviously is the goalkeeper, but Endip Tambe, he only plays as a central striker. He doesn't play anywhere else. And he is a left, he kicked with the left foot, but he has a very, very good kick from inside the box. Very good. Okay, he can put the ball whenever, whatever he wants to put it. Okay, that's why he's the starter. And that's why he is the owner of this position, not only because he cannot play anywhere else, he's the only one, but because he's very, very good in this position. Okay, but why this team, or my explanation, why this team is the champion of the African Confederation? Okay, if you seen this team playing before or playing, you saw it in this tournament, Okay, you could say this team is pretty much, is, is very defensive <clears throat> and then they go very fast. Okay, they, they strike back and they go very fast to score the goal. Yes, that's pretty much superficially what is going on in this team. But as I mentioned it, there are many teams that do this and they are not as success at, as Cameroon. Okay, this Cameroon team, he doesn't play like the usual historical Cameroon teams. Okay, Cameroon teams usually try to play a little more. They're not, this team not. They just try to be defensive and then quickly come back to score. Now, what is the secret of this team? Okay, the secret of this team is that they have one, two, three, four, five players that they change position, okay? And there they tend to look to the, to the original position, the position of where they feel comfortable. These two central back, as I mentioned, they play in reality as a defensive midfielders. So as soon as they recover the ball, they're gonna naturally go to their position. And these three, they play as a central striker and they're naturally, I'm gonna look for their position. Okay, as I explained, this player, 
he can also place here. So what they do, they rotate these two, they rotate, and this one is gonna make, it's gonna try to take this position, okay? And then, I remember that I mentioned that this one likes to show up all the time following this trajectory. So that's why this team, as soon as they get the ball, it's as simple as everybody goes to their original position and their counterattack is very effective and fast. And you don't need this, play, this team plays like this because that's why uh, the coach instructed them to play. But in reality, they do this like a step by step through these movements and it comes out very naturally. Okay, it's not really an instruction. It is, of course, is is the instruction. But they have it. They don't feel it like an instruction. It comes natural this movement, and that's why uh, it's come very good for them. And but they also want to try to play defensive. Okay, and they only do these movements when they have when they recover the ball. Okay, they're not gonna be trying to be the stars of the match. They let the other team to have the ball. They don't care about it. Okay, but when they are defense, they're, they're going to defense. These two players going here, they go here. Everybody goes back and only one player stay on the front. Okay, how do you beat this team? Okay. I have a bunch of videos. This is mainly a Spanish speaking video, a YouTube channel, sorry. And I have 50, more than 50 videos right now, 5 0. More, I have more than 50 videos, and I have never said this. Okay, I have never said that if you want to beat this team, you should play by your own ideas. I usually try to turn, try to find a uh, a crack in their teams and explain exactly how you can beat the team. But this team, they don't have a crack uh, somewhere, but they have a crack everywhere. Why? Because this team, this team, all their players are pretty much in the same level. Okay? They're not really, there is not one play that you can say, okay, this player is really the best of this team. You cannot say that. And you cannot also say either, okay, this player is the worst of this team. You can also, it's very difficult to say that. But if you want to look for the specific, okay, so I don't leave you with this taste that, oh, he's telling me something so trivial. Okay, I'm going to tell you how you can beat this team specifically. Uh, that I mentioned that they, uh, let me do it with the red that they, this player tends to go that way and this player tends to follow this trajectory. So this player always tries to make the pass in that direction. So if you have somebody from the other team trying to block that, because this player, as soon as they recover the ball, this player is gonna try to move forward. Okay, if you block this player, he's gonna try to give the ball back to the goalkeeper or He's gonna, this player is going to have to come back and give the ball to him and he player can start feeling uncomfortable the whole match and they can eventually make a mistake that you can take advantage on. But it's not responsible uh, from my side to say this because these two players simply maybe they don't play in this match and they put two difference and uh, you can, you want to have to find another way to win. But in against this team, as long as you keep your own pace and don't follow in the trap to make you play fast, you're going to be able to score pretty much if you follow your ideas because they really don't have a crack anywhere, but at the same time they have a crack ever. Okay, the other thing that can happen that I always mention in mostly of my videos that you never know when one player is going to play the game the match of their life so maybe in when you play against cameroon maybe this player has the time 
the, the, the match of his life and maybe he is never gonna make a mistake even if you try to force it. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, all from this video. The other thing that is important to mention about Cameroon is that they injure one player of the opposite team in almost every match they play in the African Cup. So you have to be aware of this. Okay, so I'm back and the recording cut for some reason, but I was just saying that uh, Cameroon has been injured in pretty much uh, many matches. Somebody from the other team. So if you play against Cameroon, you have to be aware of this. I think it was only one match in the African Cup that they didn't uh, injure somebody. Uh, also, it was a match where they injure two players from the opposite team. Okay, so this is a mainly a uh, Spanish-speaking YouTube channel. However, if you want to uh, subscribe, you can do it. I'm going to be doing uh, the Confederation Cup, all teams in English. And if you like this video, please, please give me a thumbs up. You can share it. And it says goodbye to you, the Bible of soccer, not soccer.